Hello Pilots, welcome back to another edition of our Friday live show here on Motion RC's YouTube channel. As always, I'm James and this is episode 27, so this is the second half of the year uh, as far as live shows goes. Actually, I think it's actually episode 28 because the OV-10... Uh, announcement was on one of these, but I didn't, I didn't give it a number. Who's counting? Who cares? But, um, we got a fun show for you today, and majority of the show was produced just yesterday. We got out to the field with both, actually, the A6, so I know a lot of guys have been asking about the new high-performance A6. Flight videos are coming soon, and we got out with the high-performance version of the MiG. So I have the blue one here. Um, earlier in the week, we did an assembly, so you'll be seeing that on the uh, the bottom. We'll, we could talk a little bit about it. I'll plug it into the table. We got some formation flying because Patrick and I got a chance to fly them together. That was his silver one, uh, and the original Outrunner motor was still in his. You know, he has an original from when it first came out. Um, so we could talk about that. Then we did some fun formation with the uh, A6 versus the MiG because having them both there, we said these probably would have, may have met at some point in real life or MiGs would have tried to yeah, go MiGs after. Chase them down. MiGs would have been trying to chase down some A6s and get them out of there. So we flew those together because it's funny, we usually always do our formations um, with the same aircraft. So it was good to do it with uh, two different ones. But either way, we had a lot of fun with the jets yesterday and uh, decided this show was going to be mostly about that. But you could see on the sidebar, too, the Nexa L4 Grasshopper made an appearance at our field. Lewis Sharp, uh, I saw him in the comments section. He's a member of the, Co uh, the Cobb County um, Radio Control Club, where we fly out, where I'm a member of. We see him out there a lot. And he recently got his hands on a few of the Nexa models. Um, he's really, he loves his balsa. So he's got the Twin Otter, but he was out there with the L4. And um, it was absolutely awesome to see it uh, in person. So I'm excited. And let's just go through the comments. I asked everybody, how many MIG owners do we have? And a few people, I know Vic, I remember seeing your MIG. But uh, when we get to the Hobby Squawk section, I ended up going through the entire MiG uh, thread that's been there and pulling out all the customized schemes. Because the one thing about the MiG-21, the fish bed, um, prior to probably the AL-37 and maybe like the F-18, uh, it was one of the most customizable um, you know, aircraft I think Motion RC ever produced or Free Wing ever produced just because MiGs have been... Man, we were just talking about this yesterday with Patrick. I mean, the maiden flight was 1955. So being that it's 2020, 65 years, the MiG is still going, and I think it's still uh, flown by 15 countries in their Air Force. And just last week, I showed uh, Tomislav, who uh, shared those amazing pictures of him and his son. He's a Croatian Air Force pilot. He flies a MiG there, and uh, he had his free wing MiG, and I didn't realize that he is K-R-K-A-N, Kirkan. He submitted that MiG, was in our March Madness competition a couple months back, and it went pretty far. I mean, it was a mean, he had some mean shots of it. Yeah, it's but a it's a great picture with the uh, afterburner in there. Yeah, he's That's got the afterburner. Yeah. We'll, we'll get to that, but the MiG is a great customizable platform. Again, guys, this now, every version you see is the high-performance version. I don't think you can get the original Outrunner version anymore, so they'll always come with this 1857 inrunner and as you'll see in the tandem flight coming up soon um you know the performance is is really awesome and i had never flown it before so i think that was maybe my third or fourth flight you know, only got about four or five flights in on it yesterday but you know patrick had his and we were talking about it and where to set my timer so like i set it for three minutes but like i came down and had more than enough time so with the efficiency of the inrunner you're getting more time on what is an already excellent aircraft and uh another great video i see papa boozer in here mary boozer uh his son wesley only did a video on the mig maybe two months ago we had shared it here and spoke about it but uh you know excellent flying capability and i really enjoyed flying it yesterday and happy that it's back in one piece on the table before me but um let's see Nathan Long, we will get to the, uh, we could show some A6, it'll be in here today, but uh, next week you're going to get a solo, I flew a solo flight on it, we did a tandem with Patrick, and you're going to see the uh, tandem with the A6 and the MiG, so you're going to see it fly today, and obviously the fun thing about having these two types of jets like at the field, and why I always like to bring different mix, I mean both of them fly completely differently than one, one another, you know, one wants speed and high alpha and you know, awesome, whereas this one, I mean, Patrick really showed how 
how the A6 can fly. He was keeping it, you know our field now, by if you're watching our show, we're surrounded in a bowl of trees. He was keeping it within the trees. You could fly this one much slower, you know, it's stable, and both of them awesome experiences. And like we always say, I mean, if every plane flew the same, what would be the point of doing this? You know, the, the fun of RC is that each plane has its own quirks and differences and things you gotta learn. So uh, all in all though, the MiG-21, Amazing for what it is. I'm gonna hold it up real quick just for an 80 millimeter and I think the price right now 345 It's a big significant aircraft, you know, I'm six foot tall. So if I put the uh, pedo tube on the ground and Stand up. I'm just touching that tube there. It's a long bird. So anybody who has it. I mean, it's it's almost a 90 in its uh, you know in its size and presentation it's a big you know significant good looking uh, aircraft the uh, the fish bed it is so I say we are now six minutes in let's get going with the MIG formation so this is me and Patrick I believe this might have been our third flight and now you're just getting the audio from Alex's camera you might hear us talk but we're gonna make sure that we put this uh, video out you know me and Patrick were talking through our flight as we do but I'm in the front I was on the blue one and the blue one comes all decaled up and Patrick was on his outrunner on the silver version and the silver one will come blank with about six maybe seven decal sets inside so you can really you could do it in any you know any scheme and the silver one's a great platform for the customization but I want to see can anyone hear the difference between the inrunner versus the outrunner you know Patrick was saying that he had no chance of catching me we had the same style packs we both had 5,000 well, I had an Admiral, he had, I forget what pack he was using, one of his own. But here they come. Oh, they look so good together. Oh, and I was up there. Next trend, uh, about the Black Horse Warbirds, I'm not sure when they're going to be back. I know more on their way, but um, I can't answer that question live off the top of my head right now. But um, that's something you could definitely call customer service, send an email. They might have a better answer for you there. Papa, the MIG is a challenge for Wesley? I doubt that. Or just a fun, it's, it's got a great, it's got a great envelope of things you can do with it. Because it can fly nice and slow. That body, this was us trying some high alpha stuff. He was trying to teach me how to do it. That's me, that's me, that's me. Is that me? That's, that's how it should look. And that's it's me, a... it's Patrick is like... <laughs> I love formation flying, you know, the more the merrier in the sky. But uh, Patrick and I have gotten so used to flying with each other that, you know, and he's such a good pilot, he could stick with me. But I've gotten pretty good at staying near and... Is that Pat? Yeah, that's Patrick. Yeah. Doing those nice, slow rolls. One thing about this bird, you know, we, we tame the, the rates down on the ailerons yeah, you know i, I was I just thinking it. in my head Thanks. like the mirage and those delta wings you don't want too much throw because this thing could definitely drill bit in the sky if you have too much throw i'm looking for more of those nice straight passes is this me trying to come in for a landing yeah oh you missed it i called you out I, I landed beautifully and there i am at the end and and you miss me on this one but patrick more than makes up for it that's the challenge with two planes in the sky. Which one do you follow as a cameraman when you mm. guys split off? We need more cameramen. <laughs> camera people. Yes, camera people. <laughs> Here we go. Look at Patrick bringing her in nice. One thing I love about that jet. Oh, butter. You know, butter smooth at full flaps. Oh, thanks so much. Ryan, I mean, you know, you get out there a bunch. And when you got, when you say, it's funny. I made that bird uh, yesterday as well. And on my maiden, like, like all maidens, I'm like everyone else. I was, 
you know, just nervous. It's different. I, you know, like the last couple of weeks I'd gone out with Spitfires. I was back into sort of Warbird mode, prop mode. So, you know, when you jump to a jet, it's just like, even though I've done it a bunch of times, you're sort of, you know, relearning it. So I brought my BAE Hawk out just for a few flights to warm up on. And then we got right to the MiG, the MiG Maiden. And like an idiot, I put my battery in. Patrick was there based on where he puts his battery. And I didn't bother to i thought the cg would be right and my maiden i was a little tail heavy luckily i do have a hobby eagle gyro in there but i was able to have a full flight on the maiden and practice two or three approaches and you know had no problem but realizing you know the in runner is a little bit you know is going to be a little heavier in the back than uh the outrunner was so the cg is definitely a little different you know as far as your battery placement the cg point is still the same it's about 265 millimeters from where the wing meets so right in the the middle of this bubble on the front is where your where your CG is, and then on the second flight we got it, and man, it was just dialed in right away. Um, but it's absolutely, absolutely awesome model. I'm so happy. This is one that I, again, just haven't had a reason to to ever get in front of me for video. But now that all these in runners are coming out, like a lot of the videos that we have on the website are just dated, you know, in the sense of they're having systems in there that don't exist. It still looks good, but um, you know, now this is what the MiG will always be in this version. And, you know, for the price, I was shocked when I actually looked at the webpage yesterday or out there and saw the price on it. For what it is, it's absolutely gorgeous. And, um, you know, anyone who's interested in, I wouldn't call this a first EDF by any means, but maybe a second, definitely a third. Um, she is a great performing bird. Nate... How do you like the A6, James? I want to get the high-performance one. Nate, I had so much fun with it yesterday, and we ended up making this show more about the MiG because I this was brand new. I was able to do an unboxing, so you'll see. We'll go through some of the assembly. This one I had gotten a while back, and I forget. I got it for a show, so I put it together. We never filmed me putting it together. So, um, you know, I just had it, though, but it is the in-runner version. And like I said, if you just watch the MiG, the MiG flies in its own way. The A6 can do... A whole different flight characteristics than than the MiG can. You know, it's with that straight wing. It's more of an F eighty six. Like it's definitely more beginner friendly um, EDF jet than say the MiG. Um, you know, it does have its quirks and such, but um, absolutely awesome flying. And you'll see some of it a little later on. So stay tuned. And again, next week or the week thereafter, when Alex has time to cut up all these videos we shot, uh, you are definitely going to be seeing. Uh, the A6, you'll see a solo flight by me, and then you'll see a tandem flight with Patrick and I both on our A6s, and he has, again, he has the original that had the original power system in it, and I had the in-runner version. So, um, yeah, you know, as we go through the summer, you know, new things are coming, so we'll mix in the new stuff, but we wanted, we got to revisit and redo a lot of these videos, because, you know, a lot of the, the media and content we had from the past just doesn't work anymore when you got a new thing. And also, to bring it back in there, um... It'll be great. James has a gyro in it, so you will need seven channels. Um, Alex, if you want to show, well, I guess we, you know, we'll get to that for the assembly, guys. I could, I could, I could go into it and show, but one thing I wanted to uh, go to uh, is let's transition to the Nexa L4. Lewis Sharp is in here, and again, absolutely gorgeous aircraft. I was so happy to see this one. You guys know I did the Tiger Moth a few weeks back, and. Uh, it was so stunning to see this one at the field. It's about a 1600 millimeter wingspan or 63 inches, so it'd be similar to the Flightline Spitfire and Corsair. So nice, significant bird, but what a beautiful, uh, just what a beautiful ARF. And from what Lewis, and we're gonna release a solo video and he talks about uh, the build and such. He didn't really have to do too much to manipulate um, you know, his CG like he would with a balsa model, but I love the finishes on it. The doors open up on the side, tons of access to get in there. He even put a gyro uh, in his under one of the seats, but the windows, the way they do the windows is really well done. The decals all are out of the box on there, except for the woman on the front. Um, I think that's the only decal that he could add. It's one of those if you want to add it or not. But uh, I loved it too because of the invasion stripes really make it they stand were, out, you know, really like... Great. Uh, orientation wise because when he was when he does his flight and you'll see in a minute like the Sun went behind a cloud so immediately plane gets silhouetted but you could still see this one you know and it flies nice and tame and I believe he was flying it on a 4s 
a 3300 4S, I think he said. But um, absolutely gorgeous. So I say, get on with the flight. There's but look at that gimbal. The no, that's the, the, the sun going behind the screen. There's yeah, Lewis Sharp. Two or three of them. Two or three and I, and it was super hot yesterday. <laughs> it was like, I was just, and, uh, as we did, we did about seven videos yesterday. And as the videos go on, you'll see my my hair and my shirt just gets more and more soaked as the day goes on. But he did a nice grass. I asked him to do a grass takeoff for us. And our grass isn't, isn't the best, but no problem getting that aircraft off. And it looks, it looks stunning. And for the price of these Nexa models, any of you guys out there that have only, that have only done, um, you know, foam, like, like I had for a long time, man, this Nexa at the prices and such, they're perfect to uh, get into as a first balsa model. And don't be afraid, they're majority of the work is done you're not doing any building you are assembling but um definitely something to get into i see gb linden jumped in hey gb all the way up in the pacific northwest thank you for joining us but who doesn't love a good cub i feel like a cub is something that everybody should have in their uh in their hangar anyway Dad's RC. I must admit, it's great to have a balsa model. Hey, Dad's, you're going to appear at our Facebook shout-out. I saw your elevator pick, so we're going to show that out. Give you a little call out. GB, is it too early for your glass of wine? GB does a Wednesday night live show, guys. Uh, hump Day RC with GB Linden, and he always has himself a little glass of wine. Probably a little too early today, but it is Friday, and it's 5 o'clock somewhere. It's 9 a.m for him if he's in the north place <laughs> sorry dads you posted it and you know gotta follow up but look how beautiful this plane flies and lewis is a, it, another great pilot 3300 4s he says lewis is in the comments he can, if you have any questions about it but i love yeah the blue nose on it the blue cowl okay thank you and just the finishes being able you know i don't get to see obviously with balsa models they're not sending me each one that, that comes out that would be you know, that would be crazy, and I don't know if I'd have enough time to build every balsa model on the, uh, you know, on the website, but this one is awesome. Uh, Freewing Factory is open and producing, brother. We just had a shipment recently, more shipment coming. I mean, the, L the OV-10 is produced by Freewing. That just came to us with more T-33s came back, so everything's going well with Freewing. Nice roll, Lewis. The roll rate. Look at Lewis. Not getting nervous on camera. <laughs> and I make jokes during this this video because Patrick was sitting in the background. I'm like, oh, you must he love it. He was lurking in the background. <laughs> he was lurking. I found another. There's a nice loop. It's an absolutely beautiful plane. EU store, is it running out of everything or is it just running out of the things you want at the moment? Because usually the case is... The stuff that everybody wants is what runs out really fast, you know, like like the tanks and stuff. But, you know, I see, I feel like I see a lot, oh, everything's out of stock, then I go to the website, and Freewing has a hundred something birds, and like 20 of them will be out of stock. So I'm like, oh, maybe just the one you want. But they come, that's why when things come back in stock, click that notify me when back in stock button, so you'll be one of the first people to be, you'll get a direct email as soon as our warehouse scans it in and gets it in there. But like as far as I go, I, I don't have access to see what's coming and going in the warehouse. I always have to ask somebody at the warehouse. That's why I can't answer you live here. But look at that. Beautiful straight. And he has an Eagle Gyro in there too. I don't even think he would need it. But on a windy day, any plane, it'll help. So, uh, you know, it's absolutely gorgeous. And he got about eight minutes. Is this a full flight? Yeah, it's a full this flight. This is the full flight. Oh, yeah. So we're, yeah, might as well go for it. And they can hear the plane well. I'm not... Uh, I mean... It's there. Yeah. It's okay. not overpowering. They hear, hear you. Fully. If I'm talking too much, tell me to shut up. But, uh, you know, eventually you'll get the full flight where Lewis is talking through, you know, what he did, what he liked about the build, what his parts are in there. What's up, Guniac? Ray joining us. Fire Booty himself. And I think, did you get to 1,000 subscribers yet on your channel? You know, these guys, they get to 1,000 subscribers, and they're able to accept live chat money and, you know, get paid for the time and effort they put into their own personal shows, guys. You know, the RC Hobby, people like that help help keep the RC Hobby, and maybe your video is something that 
somebody watches and they want to get into the hobby and that's what keeps the ho hobby strong good for you ray he made it to a thousand sweet touch and go right to left i'm a little louder than you Lewis, so oh is this is touch and go out here oh and he does the touch i think oh well i asked him to do a touch and go on the grass because you know with these with grass models or is this the landing i think this is the touch and go yeah. And I always get nervous, like, on our grass, when those wheels hit with a boss model, is it going to catch a nose over? Yeah. You know what I mean? And that was absolutely beautiful. And, like, he shows in the video, like, the tires that are coming with these Exa models are really nice. It's like a nice, uh, squishy foam, if you will. Oh, William Decker, yeah. Tamiya tanks, man. They're, they are crazy how... Uh, you know the they look, difference they look sweet, they look sweet. They look but the difference from that to henlong i can't wait to to get one myself hoping the boats come in soon does he take the oh that's another, another, touch, another and touch and go oh lewis i forgot this he player started cooking. He got comfortable. He like, okay. landing full stop i should have just i should have got out of the way lewis might take over the show now but this is stunning i could watch a plane like this from a, a good pilot i was asking him to do some stall turns but this might be one that I have to get for myself. The balsa models, I'm really liking them. Surya, you can install any setup you want on a balsa model. It's all a matter of making sure the motor fits under the cowl nicely, and, uh, you know, uh, you can try anything. You can manipulate anything, but I don't think it needs it, you know? Like, for a Cub, why would you want a success power? On a, on a plane that is supposed to be graceful and slow and observant. You know, you're flying a Cub, you are having some fun. I hope not, William Decker. <laughs> Let's be honest, I I hope not. At least in my sake. I mean, for, the, for those that need, yes, but I don't know how that's gonna, it's gonna hurt everybody later on, but I, I digress. Never too much power, Surya says. I mean, you know what? Strap some EDFs underneath the wings and, and go for it. Turn a cub into something else. Is this the landing? I think so. I know he lands long. He lands long, yeah. Terrible landing, Lewis. Yeah, that's when he started coming down. I was like, why didn't he start coming down before? Well, now, the one thing about this model, it does not have flaps. So, you know, he could have cut his power a lot earlier than that, but... Yeah, I don't know why he took that long landing. I think he sort yeah, of just... Lewis, why? Why'd you do that? Lewis, Lewis ruined the whole video. Oh, I love the way the, uh, the wing <laughs> hits under the wings when it's coming back towards the camera. Whoa! It looks awesome. The shine, yeah, it was bright hot yesterday, man. But... Well, I don't... I, see, people say slow flyers get boring. I, I don't agree with that. My, my thought is, I don't know, if, I mean, if you're like me, I tend to bring variation to the field so like you know if i take the mig i'll take maybe three four charge packs for it but then i'll also take the tiger moth with two charge packs or you know so while i'm charging you know fly on this once that gets charging then go to something that i can just put up and relax for a little bit because again like you know when i go out to fly i'm also there to converse and you know when you're flying a cub or a tiger moth it's much easier to talk to the people around you you know and just overall have some fun with it but what i also think would be great in that uh you know fpv would work great in that l4 grasshopper because of all the windows and you'll see it again in the video so um you know it it, it it's just a very very beautiful looking balsa model but the full windows all the way around so if you put a pan and tilt system inside on fpv that would be you know and a cub in general is much uh a perfect sort of fpv platform so if you like that too that would be awesome how come almost none fpv these things people do you know we only just recently got new fpv equipment goggles are on the side over there um and that and you know, I gotta start throwing it in stuff, but there's only so much time and I feel in like the, the week. Venn diagram between FPV users and Balsa model users is like there's that slim middle yeah. part, maybe. FPV's not it's not for everybody for sure, but it can give you a whole different experience. Like I would love to be able to put FPV in this, but I don't know if I'd ever be able to land it. You know, because you're and then you can't see. That would be tough unless you put it underneath. But one day I'll do it. You know, it's just a matter of time. 
time. To produce the amount of time we spend to produce this show now weekly is it is incredible. You know, like we put a lot of effort in, a lot of editing happening just to for this one hour on top of all the other stuff that we do. So you know, we're just two guys in here, and we did. You know, we try to get the most out of you know out of everything we can. So again, Lewis, I want to thank you so much for letting us film you, and I'm gonna get out there and film him with the twin otter at some point. And um, I'm sure, knowing Lewis, he's probably going to end up with some, some more Nexo models. So we'll do that. And what I'd like to do is, uh, thank you, Gary. Uh, what I'd like to do is I might send out Lewis a pair of floats for that Twin Otter. Because we're right next to Lake Alatoona here. It's almost a couple miles off from where we are. And uh, I'd love to get him on the lake with that Twin Otter with the, uh, with the floats. Because I love me some float flying, so... Lewis, I, we didn't edit any of that out. That was the entire the flight. Shot. When we do flights, we don't edit anything out. The you know, when it's editing, it's editing in all the beauty shots that surround it. But any flight video we do, the real editing is actually in the assembly videos because that's where you cut out the minutia. But every flight video we've ever filmed in our entire career is start to finish one. You know, we have two cameras that we sync up because two different angles. But it's you're seeing it as it happened there. You know, like. If I'm going to edit something out, I just scrap it and say, let me do it all over again and start <laughs> start fresh. So, you know, everything you see is what it is. How durable are balsa planes? Tony, I mean, it depends on how hard you crash, <laughs> you know, like little, little nicks and bumps. Like, think about a balsa model, you could bang it into the doorway and it's not going to hurt it the way you'll dent a foam model, but, you know... You once drop a razor blade through it, yeah, you, your, your covering is gonna be messed up. It's you know, it all depends. It all depends, and what your level of you know, what your level of uh, modeling is. You know, I mean, I guess there are people out there who could fix anything, but some balsa models you just might as well light it on, light a match, and send it off, or do one of the Viking funerals, just bring it out to the lake, with a fire <laughs> arrow, and just send it, send it away. That's probably the way. Yeah, Scott, over 100 people watching and 35 likes. Hit the like button for us. So, Lewis, again, thank you for that. Now, Facebook and Instagram shout out. So, let's go around. We had a lot of fun on uh, Facebook this week. Let's start with Dads. Dads, what's your real name? Why am I forgetting? But uh, this is what Dads talked about last week. He got himself a tiger moth. <laughs> and can you see the error of his ways? I was, I was making... Uh, the thing I accidentally grew my rudder on without putting my tail wheel in first, so I had to cut my rudder out, put it back on, and he said he glued in his elevator, and it's backwards. <laughs> so he got so excited to do it, and then, uh, you know, I feel your pain. I'm sure it was easy enough to just cut it out and redo it, but these are the types of things that, you know, dry fit everything on a balsa model over and over and over and over again, and then... You know, check the manual, dry fit it again, check the manual, dry fit it again. Then when you're ready to go and it's all set, you know, drop the glue in there and be done with it. But it actually wasn't as hard to cut. I thought it was going to be a lot harder for me to cut out the those hinges when I messed up the rudder. And then I ended up using the, you know, each Nexomod, at least the one that I had and what uh, Lewis was telling me, you know, they give you a sheet of the colors of the covering so it's like stickers that match so you can you can cover up mistakes so i just cut a very thin piece and laid it inside the rudder hinge so you can't see you know any of the mistakes and it really really helped out but dads you, you shared that on facebook so had to throw it up and i really like your little logo in the top right there good work and you'll get it going i'd like to see some pictures of it when you get it done and flying that would be awesome for us Scott Houston, I have a coffee mug. It's behind the MIG. It's here, man. But it's not the motion one. I got a, this guy is one awesome dad. There it is. <laughs> that was, I couldn't find my motion ones. Must be in, in the washing machine. Because I'm, I'm terrible. I'll leave coffee, go make a new one with a new cup. I'll, have, I'll come upstairs with like six different coffee mugs to wash at the same time. But uh, moving on, I forget what this, uh, this is. Dave David F Snyder doing what might have been one of the original uh, trainer F-18 schemes. I think it's a Marine scheme. And there's a picture of uh, the real F-18 that somebody posted in the comment section. But wanted to give this a call out, Daniel Snyder. That looks awesome. I love, I love a white plane, especially with some blue mixed in. Those are, you can't beat it. 
But there's the real one. Got the hornet on it. It just looks old school, yeah, that you was know? Like, like 1979. Yeah, like the, that was <laughs> like, because I think, you know, the C model was about one of the, you know, one of the oldest versions and looks really good. And I can't wait to see. I think I, he might have just posted pictures of it outside, but I still don't think he has his Cali graphics yet if he's going Cali. So, um, you know, can't wait to see him finish off. Then we had Jeff Grice. And he's got himself an Aer Lingus airliner that he's customizing. Got some really nice sh shots here. I like the, uh, the depth of field look. But I like the Aer Lingus with the clover leaf on the back. That looks clean. Very cool looking shot. And, you know, just so to show, the only, if the MiG was one of the most customized, I think the AL-37 has now surpassed as far as the customization goes. It's still amazing at this point that we're seeing new liveries that we have yet to have seen before. You know, I mean, we save all these pictures just for free wing. Um, every time I see a new one, I just throw it in a folder and, you know, it's it's unbelievable. I probably have hundreds now of, uh, of files. Then we got, I, I'm going to try to pronounce this, Hakan Hermanson. Pretty now, good. yeah, pretty good, good I think. Uh, he obviously had FPV on a pan and tilt in an L39 doing formation flying in what looks like a gorgeous location with an Avanti and just absolutely stunning photos. Um, I don't even know if this would be an FPV camera that's taking these. I can almost see if, like, he put a GoPro on a pan and tilt or something. Isn't this the DJI system? Is it the DJI I think, system? I think, it was, I think I saw this from that, yeah. I didn't really see. Uh, you know what? I probably didn't read. <laughs> Todd Breda, Todd, Todd Breda is here. And, uh... Eighth, easily surpassed. Easily. Yeah, it has to. But look at these shots. I mean, just the wingtip of the L-39 over the over a lake. This Wherever this guy is flying is absolutely gorgeous. And the fact that he's flying, you know, this way. Like, I don't know if he's, you know, again, he might just be pan and tilting the camera. But if he's flying through it and it is the DJI, then that's stunning that you're probably seeing the HD as you fly which makes it gorgeous and then if you guys noticed on both todd made the graphic on motion rc i made it the cover photo this one popped out from our good friend justin lamb out there in utah and my goodness he just put his iphone on the ground and was ripping by it and he got this one still from it and i'm almost why buy a Canon or a nikon if you're if your iphone i guess that's why it's two thousand dollars now uh, the fact that you can get a shot like that, but he also was, he was rolling video, so check this out. I even slow this down. Just stunning. Does it have sound? Yeah, let it, let the sound take over. I love when it blows by. video but here's the money shot Ooh. Ooh. let's see that again Ooh. Bravo, Mr. let's slow it down 50% let's roll it back in instant replay <laughs> let's see that one again. and 25% oh. <laughs> he could have lit a match And in regular motion. One more time. <laughs> One more time for the crowd. That was awesome. Yeah, Guniak, the in runner. I mean, it's it's helping out every free wing model, I think. But yeah, the L thirty nine with that in runner. It was already a fast jet to begin with, and that just makes it a top notch jet to uh, to fly. So Justin, thanks for sharing that. And there he is. Four ten Productions is in there. Back it up, Alex. <laughs> I just cut up a minute uh, this morning, Justin, of your full video. But, guys, give him a follow, 410 Productions. Him, he's always out there with, like, Jeremy Salt and a lot of those guys. And they get a lot of cool stuff. And you'll see in a little bit, he also had some stunning photos of his MIGs. Because uh, that's where we're headed. It's a MIG sort of day. But uh, call-outs on Instagram, guys. Remember, hashtag MotionRC, hashtag FreeWing, any brand you got. 
so that we can see them or at Motion RC us so we can see your pictures. But this one comes from Adventure RC out of Singapore. Two Avantis, one in a T45 scheme with a cool fisheye lens on the Mirage, the Tiger Meat. Which, funny, Alpha said there are a lot of people who complained they didn't realize that that Mirage, they thought that was a made-up scheme. That is not a made-up scheme. That is a yeah, real, real scheme. That is a scale scheme. Uh, the Tiger's Eyes on the Mirage. I love it. Next one, Arthur Arrow RC. He got out with not only a Shrike, but he also, I saw on his post, he had the Havoc. Um, hopefully, they will be back in stock soon. These are the two OG uh, Skynetic models, if you will. And uh, both fun to fly in their own right, but always good to see somebody post and throw it up. And then we saw, I saw another MIG pop up. <laughs> so might as well, low and fast when it was, it's funny. Like this week, all about the MIG. It seems like everything I see is the MIG. Yeah, Guniac. I think the Tiger Meat is probably the fastest 80 millimeter out there just because it's the size of a 70. You know, it's the fact that they fit the 80 in that airframe. Like, you know, I think the, the Tiger Meat, if, I, if you hold the Mirage up to, like, the Bayhawk, you know, the Hawk is bigger, and it's a 70 millimeter. So the way they did it makes it just, it's, it's, it's a maniac. It was always fun to fly, and that thing could do with that power, too. You know, like, now that I was high alphaing this and getting back into that, now I want to get my Tiger Meat back out there and work, because that one should definitely do it even better. Send us the footage, Nate. What do you say? I just got you the got sky the revolution. Oh, Nate, if you could, that's what I want to get out and fly, but I would never be able to do that plane justice as far as 3D. So if you have anyone that could film you flying it, you know, as it should be flown, we'll that would be awesome, man. Yeah. yeah, that would be awesome. I got it there and, you know, I just took it out for some picture flights just to turn it. But, you know, 3D has been something that just another thing that I'd like to learn, but there's only so much time. <laughs> to get out there you know like i wish i could fly every single day but there are other aspects of my job like just producing this darn show keeps me out of flying like we get out once or twice a week it's awesome uh oh yeah nate you're with goonie i forgot you guys are doing the show together that's the nate i'm looking at that's ah now i'm putting two and two together sorry so many names come come off us but oh if you're out there with ray then i'm sure you guys will be filming some some cool stuff i can't wait to see it Definitely uh, let me know. But I got you subscribed, so I get the bell when it comes in. But that's awesome. So now let's run over to Hobby Squawk. And today, I said since it's a MiG day, I went back through the MiG-21 thread and just pulled out all the customizations that you can do. Because remember, if you get the silver version, she doesn't come decaled up. And what I do like about silver rather than like base gray is when you do paint it, when it does get chipped, it looks real because the silver pops out from behind it. So like it, you know, painting something silver as your base is a, a pretty good way to go. But now this is from, so we're just going in random order here. This was WV Railfan. Yeah. That's a bad looking one, nice and mean. Let's go through, this reminds me of like the March Madness. Tony Accurso, I think is next. Yeah, he did, I think that was, he, he called it a Vietnamese, North Vietnamese scheme on that one. That was Tony of Tony and Evelyn, if you guys remember them. Steve Hodges, we saw this one in person numerous times. Yeah. Absolutely bad. But it's funny to see when he originally did it, it was like within a week of the plane coming out, he had this <laughs> up there. That's just the way Steve does things. This one is crazy looking. This was Rangy. Yeah. And these are their squawk names. I'm just calling them by, unless I know them personally. Oh, poor dad. I know which one. This is yeah, the bunny yeah. fighter. I love this one. I love that one too. That was just, it's crazy that that's a real scheme with the carrots on the drop tanks. Like, almost makes me want to do it, but it's a little crazy. O Side Flyer, we recognize this one because this was submitted into the March Madness tournament. Beautiful, but look at all the variations. You know, the MiG being that it was under so many different Air Forces and, you know, 65 years of history. It's like, it's unbelievable. Nuts and Volts. It's a cool name on there. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, that is a good name. Nice camo. I still have yet to try to paint a camo scheme on my model. It's just like, you know, now that I have the airbrush, I think I could do it a lot better. Like, that's something you're not going to rattle can. You got you to gotta be able to be more fine pointed with an airbrush. So, that's something I may have to get into. But another one, Manfred coming up. I mean, he had two of them. Another one in the background there. People really love this model. I mean, obviously, it stood the test of time. Then you have KRKAN. 
and this is the guy again, Croatian Air Force. So that was the that was the shot or one of them that he submitted in the March Madness. And then one more shot from last week was him with his son. Uh, there he is. He's a Croatian Air Force pilot, so he flies MiGs real life. And uh, absolutely awesome that they even were able to get out and do these shots. Then we got Jay Lee. That's me. Is that yellow, That's orange? Yellow. It's yellow. Are you that colorblind? I, I'm kind of colorblind. <laughs> the way the sun hits that, that like. And it's then also beautiful. dark screen. I'm looking far away. <laughs> Give me a break. Jets and wings. That's why I'm not a real pilot. There we go. Jets and Wings, that's our own Robert. He helps us out over in the Netherlands and Germ I think he's in Germany, but he's close to our EU warehouse, so he helps us out from time to time. Good guy. I don't see him in the in the show, but he's usually a member of the show. Then we got two from Jeremy Salt at one time. I wonder if these still exist, or was he trying to do inverted under the table with these two, like he did with the F sixteen. But those look bad to the bone. And he always has that stunning mountain top in the background. Yeah, it's like, not fair. It's you, really yeah, not fair. you can't beat those pictures. It's it's insane. Who else do we got? Hardway. Hardway submitted this one as well. I believe, well, Hardway submitted a lot. He does a lot. He's a big-time contributor to Hobby Squawk. He's always around. But uh, that looks hard. <laughs> it's like, I wonder if those are stickers or paint. I didn't get a chance to read every post. Looks like paint. Oh, Jeremy Salt, he has one. The latest hit of real train. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. Story, please. All right. Story, please. Video or it didn't happen. <laughs> hit a real train. As opposed to a fake train? Was it moving? Like, <laughs> where were you flying? Is that legal? Jeremy, so many questions just popped up. The FAA coming after you, Jeremy? Oh, the FAA. Do they have the manpower to come after Jeremy for that? <laughs> we don't know. Greyhound 61. <clears throat> and I think that's Croatian. I forget what are those. What's that symbol there? So it's at France. You're asking I, me. I, I the no red, idea. you know, red, white, and blue there. But I, I'm forgetting what that roundel is. I, I, somebody's gonna call me out for it. Um, <laughs> real quick, George Baker. He had had one. I know this probably hit a power line. <laughs> no one, George, but he had had one. He posted his livery. Oh, we got a lot. I mean, just look at all these things you could do with the MIG. That's why I'm sort of showing this. The MIG I don't is know just what happened to the name on this one. Which is uh, it's that. That's his name. Oh, his name's EDF. EDF. He wow. has he got EDF on Squawk. That's his Squawk name. I love the baby That's blue. A different a different uh you know version. Same color scheme as the one in front of me, but you know, nice. And this crazy looking one from Dave Hawker, the Hawk, who was all over Squawk for years, but sort of disappeared. He pops up from time to time again. But Hawker, we love you, you're there. CRX man Pat, he's a big time squawk. Uh, Squawker as well. He did some camo on his MIG. Then this crazy one, uh, Buzz Tower, you know, just a completely made up scheme. So he just went, might as well. You know, if you got the idea, that then do like it. a junkyard MIG, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Tony Stark built that thing. <laughs> <laughs> the Iron Man MIG. Bruce W. Another one from back way back in 2017. So that's about the year this probably came out. The MIG might have came out early 2017. It was out already by the time I was here, and I came late 2017. Brandon Moon. Is this Brandon? Yep. Brandon Moon. Always around Hobby Squad. Crazy modder, that guy. Babaru. With a silver and green. Silver and green. Brown. What the color is The in color the of that? It's, that's, that looks purple to me. That looks purple? Yeah, that's like black and purple. Black and purple? This screen is terrible. <laughs> black and purple. My goodness. Guniac, cool one, right? Next one, Brian Bomber. He's always around on Squawk. Made a nice looking one. And then finish up. Justin, you just shared this. Five of these with us. We threw one up right before the show went up. I saw you had commented. And... Uh, you know, absolutely stunning between the reflection, the trees on the left, composition. I mean, this iPhone is doing you justice. <laughs> it's unbelievable, uh, those pictures. But there you go, guys. So that was a little tour through Squawk, things like that. I mean, that's what people are doing on there. And the MiG-21 is awesome. So I say while it is 1245 already, wow. let's, uh, let's get to the A6 Intruder formation with the MiG. So this was going to be, I have the... High performance in runner in the A6, the way it comes now. And he's flying his original MiG. 
I wanted him to be the MiG pilot for this one. But uh, she gets right off, that's half laps. She takes off nice and easy. I do have an Eagle Gyro in there I put on. And then I think, oh yeah, that was it. He wanted to take off while yeah. I'm still in the air. Nobody told me that. Nobody told you that. <laughs> Patrick was like, you know what? You just you just come by me and then we'll, I was, you know, I'll try to take off as if I'm trying to shoot down his MiG while it's on the runway. But I didn't want to be over the top. Of it. There, and now right, he's on my six already. <laughs> like that's not fair. I gotta get low in the trees. Uh, dads, yeah, the A6 can take off on grass, for sure. I, I don't think you have too much of an issue, but like everything else, it depends on the grass, but the landing gear, it sits high, you know, it sits off the ground. The center tank, which I didn't fly with because it does block the cheater hole a little bit, um, but yeah, I think it's more than capable to take off the grass. You could easily land it on grass. I think I do land it on grass in the video, half on and off, but... I like the F-86 in that way. I mean, the nose wheel's a little small, so again, it'll depend on the grass. They look good together. They really do. You know, they would have met, maybe, but obviously not scale to each other. The MiG is one ninth scale, and the A-6 is a bigger jet in real life than the, than the MiG is. But there's our verticals, and I've got the inner. Look at me fly up. <laughs> Woo, keeps going. And then I think on here, I just glide it back down. That's one thing I like about this kind of jet, too, with a with a longer wingspan, like the 262 or the Venom or um, the T-33 is very like that, where it, it can it flies like more like a plane, or just like a prop plane, you know? Like, it'll glide. It'll, you know, like, you don't necessarily need all that power. You're right. It's not formation. That's what I told them to fight each other. Not yeah, fight each other. we were we were trying to fight. We were doing trying to do some fighting each other and just like you know mess around. This was like it was getting hot. We had we each had like two or th two packs left, and we're like we just got to film something because I hate storage charging. So I'd rather fly out the pack to storage charge than than uh, anything else. But then we start flying together. I think, and you'll hear, we, we did talk through this, so we'll release this as a separate video. And, uh, you know, we did some fast passes next to each other. His with the outrunner and the MiG was faster than the A6 with the inrunner. Just, you know, the intakes, the aerodynamics of the MiG is just, it's a faster jet than what the A6 is designed to do, you know? What did I say, Guniak? And the MiG-21 is stretching the budget for the 90mm F4. If you have a box, I mean, it's up to you, Ben. It's, you know, like, I, I always get shocked when people I see on Facebook all the time, which plane should I buy? Why rely on other people to tell you? Like, which one do you like? Push come to shove, they both fly excellent. They're both great models. And it's a matter of what do you want to see in your hangar? You know, like, everybody has their own... You know, they both fly completely differently from one another. You know, price-wise, an 80mm MiG is a lot different than a, you know, than a 90mm F4. But, you know, the F4 has a lot of scale features that the MiG does not have. You know, as far as the lighting, the, a lot of the ordnance. I mean, it's a beautiful model. Both of them are beautiful. And that's a, I, I do have a gray. We never did a gray unboxing of the, the F4. So one of these weeks is going to be F4 week. We'll get out there with those. And here's the A6. And that's the first time all day. Oh, the yeah. wind changed and we had to land in that direction. So I hate landing in that direction at my field. But she floats right in. And, you know, she's the type of model. It's funny with the A6. Um, I You don't need to be, like, the way the MiG, you want to be in that high, high alpha situation attitude as you come into land. Um, that one, I was able to glide it a lot more level i keep my wings level and then right at the end add your power to get that nose up and flare right at the end to touch down you know with a little bit of power and that's part of why i like these the wider wingspans you could get away with that more than with something like the delta wing like an a4 or the mig or you know some of the heavier birds where you really got to be in that high alpha attitude um you know to land and that can be just you know scary for people you know getting into edf jets but uh the a6 will 
fly, you know, like like an, land like an Avanti can, you know, in a way. And here's Alex playing with our new gimbal on the slow-mo on the DSLR, following out those A6s. And you'll see these videos coming up real soon. But there, it's a beautiful aircraft, the A6. A lot of nice scale detail on it. It comes out of the box. Um, as you see it, you don't have to do any decal work to it. Um, and then, obviously, the only thing I wish, for some reason, they didn't, they stopped making those little green bombs, but you could 3D print them. They would have been on the other wing, because there is a slot for an extra pylon that you could glue in. Like, it was a, it was an accessory when the thing originally came out. But apparently, for, I think Alpha had explained in one of our things, that was a, in a different mold, and that mold got destroyed or got too old to be able to produce out of it anymore. Whereas majority of the airplanes freewing makes everything you see on the airplane is part of the same big mold you know they're the size of doors you know eight feet ten feet big and every piece will be in there but just that bomb set was a part of like a different mold that just didn't stand up you know and once the mold's gone it takes a lot of money to make a mold you know make it perfect so that's the only thing i wish i was able to get my hands on i think you could find them on ebay maybe you know the foam bombs but with the 3d printer you can make it even better for uh, for some extra ordnance because the A6 would have it. Dads RC, 3D print would be on Thingiverse. Look on Thingiverse, dads, and just type in Freewing, and you'll see like guys like Dirty D, and there's a couple others who make basically virtually everything. And then there's Cult 3D or 3D Cult, um, and some of the same guys who post for free on Thingiverse have other files that they put up there for like a dollar, five dollars, where you download the file. Um, I did it when I was doing, if you remember, I did the Silver Eagles F-18. I found like a laser, um, one of the laser radars that went under my, my Silver Eagles. And that like I paid for because he didn't upload that to Thingiverse. So I paid like $5 to get that, to get that file in. And, um, you know, it's, it's going to be cheaper in the long run than probably buying, you know, a foam, the foam version as it would be anyway. But, uh. Nate, damn it, James, this video convinced me to get the A6. I'm telling you, man, it's it's a great it's a great flyer. If you like the A6, you know, again, it comes down to the A6, the intruder, something you love. There's a history there behind it. Um, you can't go wrong with it. It's 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 easy to fly. And wait till you see what Patrick was doing with it. Just again, within the trees, in the rudder, nice and slow. Like you could fly this entire plane on half throttle and never bring it up because it's the other thing. It's not. It's not a plane that was really needs to go, you know, mock the way this one, you'd want this one to. But we're already at 1252, so let's just show a little bit from the MiG assembly, I guess. Um, you want to unbox it or you want to assemble it? Show the unboxing quick if it's a time lapse, you yeah. said. Yeah. So this was a fish, but this was last week before my mustache came in and I'm too lazy to shave it. But, uh, and then the set, I cleaned up the set behind me a little bit, got rid of all that junk that was on the left. I think we may be redoing the set entirely. I think it's time for an upgrade uh, there. But um, everything comes out beautifully. And again, the blue version that you see here comes all decaled up already. So you don't have to do anything with the decals. Uh, and the silver version comes raw silver and seven different sets inside. So I didn't get the silver version. I, I like blue. I just think it looks cool. But everything packaged well. You get your pylons, I believe. Oh, that's the little uh, the vert underneath. And that attaches. It's actually, and I'll show you in a little bit how it attaches underneath. There's some nice scale details. It is a two-piece fuselage. So just remember when you go to do this. <laughs> I was <laughs> forgot I was holding up like a bazooka. <laughs> the pencil, there it is. But cheater in the bottom. Plenty of canopy space. Uh, Patrick was flying his yesterday on a 6,000 pack, so it can definitely carry the weight of something more. But now with the in-runner system, I think having uh, you know the 5,000 now is is perfect balance between weight and uh, and you know and performance, which is great. Not as fast as reacting as I used to be. But uh, what was I showing? Oh, this this was the little piece that comes out. This sort of glues into the uh, this glues into the the motor housing, and then attaches back with one screw. So if you need access, you just take this screw out, and then this whole piece is attached here. So it comes out. But that fin that helps you know stabilize the aircraft. Really cool looking model all around. I love the detail on her. You know, and at the price, obviously what you're getting at that price or what you're not getting would be like lights, things like that. Uh, aren't there, but it's 345 right now on the US website for a model this size. I mean, these are both 80s. I mean, let's just show you the size. So 
let me put that. Okay, I'll come in there. And, uh, I mean, look at that. Nose to nose. So that's from the shot cone to the back. I mean, it's a significantly larger model. You know, she's impressive, the MiG, when you see them out there. She is definitely an impressive model. Obviously, the wingspan on the A6 is, is a lot more. But uh, it's just crazy that both of these things, you know, fly on the same power system. And they just fly totally, completely different. You all should come out with some more 4S EDF jets with retracts. Yeah, I don't even think we have a 4S EDF jet with retracts. The, A the A10 would be it, right? Yeah, the A10. I glued in the retracts. I think the A10 is the only 4S jet, but, you know, I like the belly landers. If I'm going 4S, you know, like that little F18 I did last week, this one, I don't need retracts. That thing's awesome. <laughs> like, it just was perfect for what it is, you know, at like 139 or something. It's crazy. Good price on the MiG. Care less about the mites, about lights. <laughs> mites <laughs> george yeah i mean you know it, it depends i mean but again just going in the model's been around a little while now you know it's probably sold well you know what what determines the price of the model did they make their money back on the original mold you know things like that because again you're always taking a risk when you come out with a new aircraft or a new new one of these because you never know what people are going to like or what they're not going to like so um you know all varies in, but I'm so excited that I got one here. I can't wait to, to get out and fly this even more. So I guess the assembly, I mean, we got five minutes. Um, the assembly video is going to come out. We had more footage to show. You can we'll tease it. Yeah, tease, tease it, it through. The whole video will be out sometime next week. Like, you know, every what I, what I like about a big canopy space, so when you take the tray out, you know, one of the first things you do is take the tray out because when you run the rudder and the two elevator uh, leads through the fuselage, you're going to very, all the wiring goes nice and right underneath the battery tray, so it's out of the way, which I like. What came in front? What was that? That was the monitor. The monitor. Oh, the <laughs> monitor. I was like, what got in the way there? So again, you're using the go get them wire. I just taped the servo leads together to pull them through, but it pulls through nice and easily. Not much glue. Uh, there's no real glue on the main uh, structure, so not on your horizontal, your vertical, or your main wings. It's all screw together construction. The only thing you're gluing on are the, you know, the accessories, the little bits. No, no blue box. The, the MCBE, which is fine. The blue box is fine. I don't know why everybody gets so crazy about it. There are no issues with the blue box. I feel like it's just an excuse. I've never had an issue with a blue box yet, and I've flown hundreds of free wing models on box at this point. Um, but no, it's not straight to receiver. There is a MCB inside of it. There is a fun multifunction control board, but it was one of those original smaller white ones, um, not the blue box version, uh, which you'd see in a second. But again, that's just a way to, to keep the channels down, you know, so that more receivers and type can, can fly it. That's all. So again, whenever you're gluing foam to foam, guys, you know the drill, score up your model. Um, foam to foam it just meets if there's any overspray it helps and also just creates more surface area so I do that <clears throat> pull it apart and wait about 90 seconds when you pull it apart 60 to 90 seconds before you put it back together so you see all that stringy bits yeah Nate, I, I, I like the delay it's you know I mean when am I ever dropping the gear right before I touch down anyway what do I need it to be so uh, you know immediate for it's kind of it's kind of cool. You know, it's not something I even think about when I'm flying because I'm always dropping my gear when I'm long, when I'm just starting into my down leg and I got plenty of time before it comes down and then to check, you know, if it's out by the time I turn into my final, I'm usually good to go. But yeah, we're just teasing here. So again, just one ribbon cable on the wings and everything is already pre-installed. The landing gear, the servos are all pre-installed. You just got to put on your control rods and linkages as you would. And I just followed the book. I believe this one was very easy. Every linkage was one-to-one -one on this, from the servo to the horn. So that made it very easily. Your four standard screws, they're the ones that go. They give you two extra. When mine came out of the box, uh, there were only two screws in the battery tray and the two other ones because obviously the first step is to remove that battery tray when you start pulling things through. So then you just add the other, you know, four screws into the battery tray at the end. I think it's only 12 screw construction, if even. Yeah, four for the main wing, four for the vert, and then two 
for one. Uh, yeah, two for the horizontal stabilizers that go in. So it's just 12 screws up front, and then this, the shot cone screws in. This is carbon with uh, plastic for the tube, and it goes over like a metal rod that's already pre-installed there. So you just slide that all on. You know, this is, this is plastic. You're putting this little piece on. You do have to cut these fins in. That's the only thing you, you have to cut in. Uh, they give you that, and... Um, yeah, that's about it. And then you're gluing on the, the pylons, and the, they're magnetically, but these are glued on. And just score these off. Scott, 100%. This thing could take off from grass, no problem. Bigger nose gear, nice stance. You should have a lot of guys at Nall are taking these off at grass, we've seen. And Patrick was doing it yesterday at the field. Uh, no problem on this one on grass. The nose wheel on this one is a little smaller. I still think you can get off of grass, but all grass is different. If you have a rough field, you know, watch yourself. But if you have, if you have a nice maintained grass field, short grass, you should be fine. But guys, that already hits us up for 1 p.m. So in the interest of keeping this, you know, tight every week for uh, for the live show. Um, I want to thank all you guys for joining us, and if you haven't had a MIG or you haven't experienced it, um, I'm happy that I finally got to experience it and get out with it. I want to get out with it more, So, but you'll be seeing a, a solo flight of just me with Patrick standing behind me talking me through it, tandem flight coming of us on both of the, the older system, which no longer exists, and what you get now if you just buy it uh, today. And uh, yeah, A6 videos coming, that L4 Grasshopper video that Lewis helped us coming. Last week I was out with the Sea Fury, that's going to be coming eventually. Poor Alex back there. Uh, a lot of editing going to be getting done. And uh, yeah, I thank all you guys for joining. Uh, Abby, yes, we do. We would deliver to India. You'd want to uh, visit our motionrc.eu site um, for that. Yes, Guniak, the MIG is definitely a B. M, what is it? B A M F. There it is, a B A M F. We put B A M F pilot under Patrick Crowisdale in all our videos for the longest time, and nobody called us out for it, which is really funny. But, um, guys, thank you so much for joining me. We'll see you next week for episode 28, and I'm thinking next week's video. Um, I'm thinking of doing a whole video on pre flight checking your aircraft from unboxing to the field, all the things you need to do before your plane leaves the ground. Um, tugging on your servo, on your control horns, tugging on your gear, making sure everything is going through, going through your aircraft um, so then you don't have any sort of accident. So I think it's a video that needs to be done. And uh, thank you guys for joining, and we will see you next time, next week, at Motion RC. Thanks, guys.